Now, Anne, I want to come to you on tax and the election campaign, as we know, saw a huge amount of focus placed on a large amount of tax matters. In your mind, what are the major changes that are going to happen over the next year in the tax landscape? Yeah, well, I, I can't remember a, a recent election where there has been so much interest in tax and talking about tax in the election. So it was a significant element of the campaign. Um, what we can expect is a mini budget in December. And I would expect most of the national tax policies that National campaigned on to be implemented then. Uh, that's in relation to personal tax cuts, which is a, a movement in the uh, middle income thresholds for the different tax rates. Um, the uh, changes or the unwinding of some of the uh, labour initiated uh, changes to property, residential properties, which I think will be a, a boon to mum and dad investors who invested in a, an extra residential property as part of their building funds for retirement. There'll be a, a potential change in commercial uh, depre depreciation on commercial buildings. And then there's the unwinding of things like the EV rebate, the fuel taxes and that sort of stuff. So they've, uh, they've, there's, there's a, there'll be a lot in that budget because a lot of those changes need to be in legislation by 1 April 2024 or 1 July 2024. And if they don't bring them in, in legislation in December, they won't be passed in time. Oh, so it's a very short list then, by the sounds of it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure they've been working on the changes that need to be made uh, in the background. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's any modifications once that they've been in and had a good look at the books, or whether the coalition talks have changed any of that landscape as well. Specifically on that, do you think that the coalition talks could put any of those tax potential policies at risk? Yeah, I, I think that National campaigned heavily on their tax policy, so they'll be reluctant to give things away. Um, two things that might be of interest would be, will the commercial de depreciation on commercial buildings be unwound? Uh, or will there be a wind back in R&D tax credits, uh, which have been going for the last, uh, last few years? Um, that was something ACT campaigned on um, to get rid of it. And... Uh, in 2010, when National came in against uh, Labour, they unwound the previous R&D tax credit regime there. So there's a bit of history there. So I'm watching that with interest. Certainly a lots bit to of, watch. Yeah. The BDO Index shows that 25% of business leaders say that compliance matters, including tax is one of those, are causing them to feel less mentally healthy than normal in their business lives. Why do you think that is? I think there's a, a, a sense of ever ever-increasing amounts of disclosure and ever-increasing changes that are made that uh, I think where any time there's a tax change it usually brings in complexity or uncertainty which then creates uh, problems for business leaders. I think in the it forms of increasing disclosure there's be, we've seen that with the increased disclosure rules on trusts the requirement to pro you know, provide financial statements we're seeing in international businesses we're seeing a lot more disclosure around transparency between how the profit is calculated in New Zealand compared to other countries. And that all adds on to extra questionnaires to be completed, extra information to be provided. And uh, there's no relief for the cost of doing that. You can't do it for, you've got to add it on to the the cost of complying with the business. And um, so it, it just adds to that complexity, uncertainty, and it takes away time and resource. You know, business leaders, and business owners want to do what they do best, which is concentrate on their business. And uh, any time they have to comply, spend more time on compliance matters, they're not really making the boat go faster, to use a Team New Zealand uh, expression, or making their business thrive. So I think that, that taking away of their focus from the business to comply with government regulations, whether it's tax or other areas, uh, uh, is you know has a has a has an impact a negative impact. Mm, two things that we can't avoid in life: death and taxes. <laughs> well, yep, that's, I made a career out of it. <laughs> Are there any of those tax compliance matters that you're really seeing your business clients focused on at the moment? My tip to to companies is always to try and stay on top of their compliance. Right, so you know, file your GST returns, file your PYE, uh, get your tax returns in in time, manage your provisional tax, manage your use of money interest. That's all becomes a bit more challenging. There's lots of options there. Um, where we see businesses getting into trouble is is on PYE and GST. And that's a really no-no because that's funds that are held in trust. It's like a 
fiduciary responsibility because you're collecting it on behalf of the government. And if they fall behind in that because cash flow, it's easier, they see it easier to drag out the inland revenue than go to the bank and get some more money. Real challenge for uh, for those businesses and some risk to the directors. Um, and we see the revenue pro- prosecuting in the PYE and GST area. I think the other aspect of PYE, and, and it's a function of inland revenue being asked to do more and more things through the uh, connection through payroll, um, is that ad- additional complexity. And we're seeing a lot more firms outsourcing their payroll because they just can't cope. It takes too much of their time to try and pay their pay their employees and comply with all the the uh, regulations that have to go with it. 